All right, welcome back folks. We're gonna move on today to a skill called put it in perspective. Put it in perspective. And this is a skill that we're gonna train you to use when your mind is filled with catastrophic thoughts. And I'll define that for you in a minute. But how many know already what I'm talking about? You've just got these worst case catastrophic thoughts zooming around in your mind. Anyone familiar with what I'm talking about? Just put your hand up. Mm -hmm. All right, so I see some head nodding. So we're gonna teach the skill of put it in perspective, how you can stop all of that catastrophizing from happening. And it's gonna build the competency of optimism. So go ahead and circle optimism. Because when you train this, we really want to make sure that we're helping people to understand which competencies are we building, put it in perspective, builds optimism. Okay, now catastrophizing. Let's talk about what that is. Catastrophizing is when you waste critical energy. Circle waste critical energy. So it's when you're wasting critical energy thinking about irrational worst case outcomes. Things that have a 0 .00000 keep on going zero one probability of happening. This stuff's not gonna happen, but your mind is consumed by it. Your mind is so filled with these catastrophic thoughts, these doom and gloom thoughts, that all your energy is going there, and what you're not doing is taking purposeful action. So catastrophic thinking is when you're wasting critical energy. All your resources are being used in your mind thinking about these dire outcomes. And because your mind is consumed with those, what you're not doing is acting purposely. So we're gonna talk about that, catastrophic thinking. And the goal of this skill is not to get rid of anxiety completely. We're gonna talk about how when you catastrophize, what happens in your body is that you start being sort of filled with anxiety. And the goal isn't to get rid of anxiety completely. I mean, you guys know, some anxiety is a good thing, right? It motivates you, it keeps you aroused, keeps you focused. So we don't wanna get rid of anxiety completely, but we gotta take the edge off. We gotta lower your anxiety so that you're able to engage with whatever it is right there in front of you that needs your attention. So that's what we're gonna do, put it in perspective. All right, so there are three different styles of catastrophic thinking. And I'm gonna go through each of these styles and as we go through them, I want you guys to be thinking about, well, which style do you lean towards? Some of you are gonna find that one of these three styles really matches the way you catastrophize when you fall into this style of thinking. So we'll go through all three, and we'll talk about what they do to your body and your attention. So the first one is called downward spiral. Okay, let's imagine that you need to meet with your first sergeant at the end of the day, and you just find that out. In a downward spiral, the news that you gotta go see your first sergeant at the end of the day is a trigger, and now your mind is like a runaway train. Your mind starts generating all of these horrible, ever increasing worse and worse and worse things that are gonna happen because you have to meet with your first sergeant. So maybe you say to yourself, oh, I'm in trouble. You know what, I'm, get, I'm gonna get an Article 15. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get released. My wife is gonna, she's gonna leave me. If I don't have a job in the army, my wife's gonna leave me. If she leaves me, you know, our kids are gonna be ruined. They'll never get to see me. My wife will take my kids away. They'll move out of state. I'll never see my kids again. They're, I'm gonna be depressed for the rest of my life. I'll never find another job. And so your brain just creates this ever increasing worse, 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 worse story. That's called a downward spiral. Does that make sense? How many of you have ever been caught in a spiral like that? Just a quick show of hands. Yeah, a lot of us do. We'll talk about why later, but a lot of us do. So that's a downward spiral. And it's like a runaway train. Okay, that's style one. The second style we call scattershot. So scattershot's a little different. Let's imagine that you've been trying to reach your loved one. And you've been calling and calling and calling. Let's say it's 30 minutes and you haven't been able to reach this person. In a scattershot, 
style of catastrophizing, your brain just kind of sends up at you all of these really horrible things that might have happened. But it's not a story like the first one. It's just disconnected but equally miserable, horrible things. So you've been trying to call your loved one, and let's imagine that in the scattershot version, maybe what you're thinking is, oh my God, he, he might have been killed. You know, maybe he left me. Maybe he's being fired. I'll never see him again. And it's just these disconnected but equally negative or catastrophic outcomes. So that's scattershot. So we got downward spiral, which is a story, ever increasing worst story. We've got scattershot, which is just really bad stuff, but it's not kind of in story form. They can be disconnected things. And then the third one we call circling. So circling is very different than the first two. So let's imagine that for circling, let's say that you have a brief that you need to deliver. And in the circling form of catastrophizing, your brain is probably going something like this. You know, there's no way I'm going to pull off this brief. I'm not going to be able to speak clearly. There's no way I'm going to pull off this brief. I'm just not going to be able to speak clearly. I'm not going to be able to speak clearly. This brief, I'm just not going to be able to pull it off. So in that one, you're just kind of going around and around and around with the same one or two thoughts. It's not as negative as downward spiral or, or scattershot, but you notice you're just going around and around. I'm not going to be able to pull off this brief. I can't speak clearly. There's no way this is going to go well. And you're just going around like a cat chasing its tail. So those are the three different styles of catastrophizing. Now let's just talk about them for a minute. When you are in or you've seen somebody in a downward spiral, remember that's that runaway train where it's a story that your brain is creating and it's so powerful, that story is so powerful that your body reacts as if all those what ifs, because that's all it is, it's a bunch of what ifs, but your body reacts as if those what ifs are happening now. They're the what is. So what's going on in your body? Like how do you feel when all of that stuff is zooming around in your brain? What do you think? Yeah. You feel like anxious and panicked? So Lisa said anxious and panicked, absolutely. Anxiety just shoots straight up. Adrenaline? Adrenaline. And, and boatloads of, bucket loads of adrenaline, right? So the adrenaline is so intense that it can create, as Lisa said, panic. Give me, what's going on physiologically? Like describe to me what you might be feeling in your body. What's going on with your heart? It's racing. It's racing. We're absolutely racing. How about your palms? What's happening with your hands? Sweaty. Sweaty, absolutely. So all of this physiology is going on, and because of that intense physiology, what you're not doing is taking action. You're not taking purposeful action. You might be pacing, and that's, I guess, action, but you're not taking purposeful action. And so downward spiral and scattershot are very similar in that way. High anxiety, distracted, non-focused thoughts, heart pounding, Sweaty palms, all of that stuff you guys just described. Good. In circling, it could be a little different. In circling, the anxiety is not quite as high because those thoughts aren't quite as catastrophic, but you're still not acting. You're caught in that loop, in a cycle of thinking, and that cycle of thinking is preventing you from preparing for the brief and being ready to go. Okay. So those are the three styles. And again, the most important thing, and go ahead and maybe circle this at the bottom of your page, is that all three of these styles prevent purposeful action. And these are times, something triggered this thinking in you, these are times we want you to take action. But because of these styles of thinking, you're not. You're panicking instead. All right, catastrophic thinking. So let's just be really clear that catastrophic thinking is different than contingency planning. You all know that you've got a contingency plan. You have to anticipate what are some likely negative outcomes, what are some likely problems that could occur, and what is my course of action, what's my contingency plan, if that does indeed happen. So contingency planning is a great thing. The problem with catastrophizing 
is that it blocks contingency planning. You are so caught up in all of those what ifs, those what ifs that aren't the likely negative things to happen. They're the irrational, irrational worst case stuff because that's what's rattling around upstairs in your brain. You're not saying, well, what am I going to do if this event occurs? You're not planning for it. So it blocks contingency planning. Just a, a, an example that one of the NCOs shared with me was, look, if we were preparing for a, a field training exercise, we would have a contingency plan for what are we going to do if there's bad weather. We have a contingency plan for that. We don't have a contingency plan for what are we going to do if a meteor falls out of the sky on top of the field training exercise. And so planning for bad weather, contingency plan, meteors flying out of the sky, catastrophic thinking. Any questions about the difference between contingency planning and catastrophic thinking? All right, so let's then talk a little bit about what do you do to help yourself or someone else when they are catastrophizing? So we know that when people catastrophize, they feel miserable, their hearts are pounding, they feel nauseous, as Lisa said, they might panic. Um, they're not contingency planning. So what do we do to get people out of this mode of thinking? And some of you, when you've seen someone else catastrophize, let's be honest about it, when you've seen someone else catastrophize, sometimes the impulse in us is to say what? When you see someone in that, lost in that mode of catastrophic thinking, what do you want to say to the person? Snap out of it. Snap out of it, right? I mean, some, truly, what we want to say, maybe a quick little slap and say, come on, snap out of it. But the fact is, that doesn't work. That doesn't help a person get out of this mode of thinking. So we need to train, train them a skill that they can use to get themselves out of this style of thinking when they're in it. So I'm going to take you through the steps of putting it in perspective. And you'll see it's pretty straightforward. So step one says describe the activating event. So like everything in this course, the first step is let's describe the trigger. And the trigger might be I'm about to give a brief, I have to go see my first sergeant, you know, my significant other is unreachable right now. So you just describe the trigger, what led to this style of thinking. That's step one. Step two is capture. Circle the word capture. I am a verb geek. I love the verb capture when it comes to this skill because the word capture, the verb capture, tells us exactly how to work the skill. That step two is to capture all of those catastrophic, irrational thoughts that are zooming around in our brain causing us all sorts of pain and suffering, that it's our job to capture them, to gather each one of those catastrophic thoughts up and list them down on a piece of paper. So we're going to capture, and we're going to keep on writing down those catastrophic thoughts until we've captured all of them. Now they're no longer in our brain. Instead, they're on a piece of paper. So that's step two, capturing your catastrophic thoughts. Step three you'll see the verb is generate. It says generate, generate best case thoughts. So circle generate. And let's just talk about this generate for a second. Why do you think we have generate be the verb? How does the, what, how does the, what does the word generate mean to you? What do you think? Yeah. Those thoughts don't, they're not already there, so you have to sort of work to get to them. Yeah. So, those worst case thoughts, you can capture them because they're already upstairs in your brain. But the best case, our brains don't do that, right? We have to generate them. We have to take the time and a little energy to say, all right, well, what could be the most, the best, the most, you know, positive outcomes that could happen? And I'm going to spend two, three minutes generating those best case thoughts. Now, when you're thinking about something really, really negative and catastrophic, how do you feel? What's the emotion we said that comes with that? Withdrawn almost. Okay, so you can be withdrawn, absolutely. I mean, what other emotions come with all those catastrophic thoughts? What's a primary one? Fear. 
fear and anxiety? Absolutely. And when we're generating the best case, what do you think the emotion is that comes with that? When you're sitting there and you're generating all the best possible things that could occur, what emotion do you think you might feel? Relief. Relief. Absolutely. That's great. That's absolutely great. You might feel a little relief. You might even start to laugh a little because you're kind of generating all of these really, really positive, probably not going to happen, but really, really positive thoughts. And so when you generate the best case, folks, you know what happens? You jolt yourself out of catastrophic thinking mode. That by generating the best, having a little laugh, having a sense, as Sergeant Garner said, of relief, what that does is it lets all that physiology calm back down. Your heart starts to return to baseline. Your palms aren't so sweaty anymore. You don't feel quite so nauseous. All of your physiology starts to return to baseline because you jolted yourself out of that mode of thinking by generating the best. So that's going to be our third step. Now, before we go to the fourth, let me just, let's just get the visual on this. You've described the trigger. Then you've captured your worst, your catastrophic thoughts. Then you've generated your best. What are the best possible things that might happen? I want you to think of those as kind of left-right limits. Probably reality is somewhere in between. Reality is probably not as bad as the worst. It's probably not as good as the best. Reality is somewhere between your left and right limit. And so that's our fourth step. Our fourth step is to say, okay, it's not going to be as bad as those worst. It's not going to be as good as the best. Let's now identify. Step four, circle the word identify. Because what we're doing here is now we're doing, the hard, we're doing the heavy lifting. This is the heavy lifting. Now we're saying to ourselves, all right, what truly is going to happen? I, I have to go see my first sergeant, or I can't contact my loved one, or I got this brief in five minutes. What are the likely outcomes? And so now, with your left-right limits, not going to be as bad as the worst, not going to be as good as the best, now you're working to identify what are all the likely things that I'm going to have to deal with and plan for. And you're going to make a list. And then the last step is step five, develop a plan. Circle the word develop. Because this is, this is partly the contingency plan, right? Now you're developing a plan for all of those things that you just said are likely to occur. You're not going to waste your time planning for the worst, because it probably ain't going to happen. You're not going to waste your time planning for those unlikely best, because that's probably not going to happen. You're going to use your resources and energy and time planning for the most likely outcomes. Those are the steps of the model. Describe the activating event, step one. Step two, capture the worst. You've got to take it from your brain, put it on a piece of paper. Step three, generate the best. They're not in your brain yet. You've got to make those best case outcomes up to jolt yourself out of that worst case thinking to get a little relief, to feel a little bit more positive so your physiology turns down. Then you're going to identify the most likely, what do I have to plan for? And the last step, step five, develop a plan. Put it in perspective. All right, that was a lot of information in a short period of time. Let's take a minute to answer any questions you have. So what questions do you have about catastrophizing or the skill of putting it in perspective? What questions do you have? Yeah, sorry, Mason. I have one. Um, I, I don't be, tend to be a person that catastrophizes. Is there some situations that people tend to catastrophize more? Okay, great question. So, like Sergeant Mason, there's probably others in the room that don't see themselves in this style of thinking all that often. You don't see yourself caught up in that catastrophic thinking, whether it be the downward spiral, the scatter shot, or the circling. We do know that every one of us, every one of us, can have this style of thinking triggered in us in certain situations. So I'll give you a few. One is if you're run down or depleted. So even if you tend not to catastrophize when you're on your A game, you know, you've got a lot of sleep, you're feeling good, if you're run down or overly stressed, if you're sleep deprived, which we know for warriors is a big issue, that the tendency to catastrophize will go up. So that's a time to be on the lookout for, is the style of thinking creeping in? And if it is, to work the skill of putting it in perspective. Another um, trigger of catastrophic thinking is if you're about to do something new. It's, it's your first time. You know, maybe it's your first time 
you know, deploying, or it's your uh, first time clearing a building, or it's your first time public speaking. I mean, whatever the first time is, when that happens, and if it's something that really matters to you, so it's a first time plus it's high stakes, it really matters to you, then that might trigger catastrophic thinking and would be a good time to work the skill. Another thing I'll say on that, and I'm, I'm sure there's more questions, is this is a great skill to teach your families because when you all are downrange and your spouses, your kids, your brothers, your sisters, whoever is home and they can't reach you and you're something that really matters to them, that situation can trigger catastrophic thinking in your loved ones back home. So this is a skill that we want to not just train our warriors in, but we want to train their families in as well. Great question. Who else has got a question? Yeah, Sergeant Hampton. What's the point of generating best case? Couldn't I just go to most likely? Yeah. So a lot of people have Sergeant Hampton's question, which is, look, lady, time is money here. Like, why can't I just do worst case and then go right to most likely? And if that works for you, have at it. But here's what we find. For most people, once you've captured the worst, it's hard to go to the most likely because you haven't set those left-right limits. That, that when you're doing the most likely without jolting yourself out of that really catastrophic thinking, is that your most likely thoughts, they're really pretty catastrophic still. And so for most people, you got to work the left side, catastrophic, capture them, generate the best so that you jolt yourself out of that frame of mind you get a little relief going, you maybe have a laugh for a second, and then with that best case generated, now your brain is equipped to do the hard part, the heavy lifting as I think of it, is identifying the most likely. So most people are going to find you really need to set those left-right limits to use a skill effectively. Good question. Who else has got a question? Yeah. Uh, I have one. Um, what if generating the best case thoughts is, seems unrealistic? Yeah. And they are unrealistic, right? I mean. The goal of those best case thoughts isn't to identify good things that will likely happen. The goal is just to get your brain off that track it was on. Because your brain, when you're catastrophizing, is so far down that catastrophic track that you've got to find some dramatic way to shift gears. And so the goal of the best case is to be a bit unrealistic, to be a bit playful, to be a bit kind of overshooting the mark about the best case because that's what your brain needs to get it back into reality mode. Good. Any other questions? Yeah, sorry, Fabian. So what is the worst case outcome is very likely to happen? Okay, so that's an important question. What if the worst case outcome is likely to happen? And sometimes that happens, folks. Sometimes when your brain starts on that catastrophic mode, the first one, two, maybe even three thoughts are potential things that could happen. There is a likelihood that that might occur. I mean, if your first sergeant said, see me at the end of the day, there is a likelihood that maybe you're in trouble about something. And so if that's the case, well, then we would want you to move it to the most likely column and plan for it. Where we see that it becomes a runaway train is that those worst case keep on going, they keep on going, and they keep on going, and now you're all the way down at the bottom, and what you're thinking about down there has really no bearing on reality. So we have to bring you out of it by working the skill. All right, so now you're gonna talk about this further with your MRT.